Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new Scale 75 Artist Acrylics range, um, specifically their skin tones. This was out on Kickstarter a while back. They are some heavy bodied acrylics made especially for miniature painters. If you've ever used heavy bodied acrylics before, these are very similar. They're a little thinner than what you might have experienced if you bought professional grade artist acrylics at a Hobby Lobby or something like that. But they're great. You can use them in an airbrush. You can water them down and glaze with them. They're a pretty cool line and I've been using them exclusively for the last few months. And so I'm going to paint this naked Irishman here from the foot store range to show off what you can do with this paint range. And I'm also going to use the guide that comes with the paint. If you've ever bought Scale 75 paint sets before, they have little tutorial pages that come with it that show you how to paint. Usually they're busts. So I'm going to use that on this model. They use some different techniques than I usually use. So we will see how their own tutorial works out on this historical model. So sit back and relax and let's paint a naked guy and get demonetized. So the tutorial tells us to start off using the mid-tone color, the pink skin. So I'm going to go ahead and cover all the model, do several passes with very thin paint. I've thinned this down to a little more than a glaze consistency. Um, if you've ever dealt with heavy body acrylic, sometimes the pigment kind of falls apart when you water it down. But this stuff really does thin down quite nicely gives a nice even coat. I'm using a big brush here. I'm using a level three. I like using larger brushes when doing skin tones because I think it gives more even coverage. It doesn't give a uh, splotchy results. If you're using too small of a paintbrush, sometimes that will happen. So I'm just going to cover all of his body in this. So usually when I paint skin tones, I start off with a nice dark red or a brown purplish color and then I layer up from there with my highlights. But I think Scale 75 wants us to make use of the great glazing properties of this paint to put in our mint tones and then glaze up into the highlights and then glaze down into the shadows. So that's what we're going to attempt. I never really paint skin tones that way, so this will be a little experimental for me. All right, but we're just going to keep painting this guy till we get some decent coverage. And once we get a nice base coat, I'm going to start the first highlight, which they have me taking some of that pink flesh, mixing it in with some golden flesh for the first highlight. And I'm going to be hitting most of the skin with this color. Uh, I'm going to only leave the deep recesses or places I know that uh, will be in shadow, that deep pink. And again, I'm using a larger brush than I normally would for detail work. Just get nice, even coverage over his skin. And I think that's important with skin tone to get nice, even coverage or else you know, the skin can look kind of unrealistic and blotchy. And then once I have that first highlight layer down, I'm going to go with the second highlight layer, which is just some pure golden skin. So again, I'm watering this down quite a bit, a little bit more than a glaze. And now I'm going to hit even less area, just the, you know, the top of his thigh there, the top of his foot, places I know that light will be catching. Uh, on his leg on the lower portion there to give a little shadow on the musculature of his leg uh, Hitting his stomach his pecs all the places. I know light is hitting still using this large brush because we're actually still Still hitting quite a large portion of his skin with this color. We're not getting up to the high highlights yet And then once we're done with that highlight color, we're going to hit our first uh, shadow layer here and so what we are doing is we're taking some of the crimson color, we're taking some of the burnt kind of brown skin and some golden flesh and mixing it all together. And we end up with a mixture that looks a lot like Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel. And I'm going to hit all the areas that I know are going to be in shadow around his armpits, where his, you know, in between his muscles, along his leg here underneath the knee. Just places that I want to emphasize and get a little bit more contrast in. And I really do like the look of this shadow layer. I think it turns out well and had some good contrast. Then after we're done with that shade level, we're going to go and take actually our highest highlight of light skin. And we're going to focus on the areas that we really know light is hitting here on the side of his calf, the top of his knee, top of his feet places that will be catching light that we really want to emphasize here in the kind of the really uh, ridge of his leg 
And what's interesting about this technique or in this tutorial is that we still have a few more layers to go. So we're going to hit our highest highlight and then go back and reinforce some shadows. Usually I like to save the highest highlight for the end, but here they're having us do things out of my normal order here. So we'll hopefully it will still turn out pretty well. We might have to come back and touch up the highest highlights though. All right, after we got those high highlights done, we're, we're going to take a really dark shadow mixture, which is the burnt skin mixed with the mossy green. There are some greens in our skin tones. It's usually pretty hard for me to add that, so I'm interested to see how this will turn out. I'm hitting, you know, all the areas that I know I really want to emphasize here underneath his cheekbone, in the folds of his arm, and any muscles like that. Um, and it, it, it does look more brown. There's, there's only really a hint of that green in there, very subtle. And we're just going to go and really try and draw out these uh, the contrast here. Now, I wasn't as big of a fan of this, this shadow layer. I think I might have been okay with just keeping what we had. It got a little too dark in areas. I don't know. I probably was just using it too liberally. I probably just have to mess around with where I place this. I only place this in uh, very limited areas. I kind of went all over the model with this, and I felt like I... I ruined some of my transitions that I had made earlier. So I will actually be going back and going over some areas with some pink skin and then even with the light skin as well, just to blend it down in some areas. So I think that layer might be kind of an un unnecessary step. I'm not sure if I'll use that again. And then after that, I think as a way to kind of draw together the shadows and the highlights, we take a very watered down crimson, and I mean like super glazed down, barely any color coming off the brush, and I'm going and I'm kind of hitting the areas, those transition areas between the deep shadows and the highlights here, trying to blend them together, make them look a little bit more seamless. And that's pretty much all we're going to do with the skin tones, and I actually, I never thought to paint skin this way. I kind of really like it. I, I like controlling the shadows a little bit more. I like starting off with the mid-tone. I, I think the skin came off looking a little more realistic than I usually am able to get it, so I might be using this a little bit more in the future. Now before we go, I just want to show you a technique I've started using to quickly paint red clothing on my miniatures. I've been painting a lot of Romans and I like doing a lot of red. And this is a way to kind of speed paint uh, a cloak or clothing and give it a pretty decent result with pretty decent transitions. So what I do is I take some dark blue and just draw streaks down the deep crevices of it, their cloak or clothing. And then I go over it with a violet purple, kind of liberally put that in not only the deepest portions of the crevices in this, in this cloak here, but also bring it all the way almost up to the ridge of the folds in this cloak. And this is a lot different. Usually, you know, people just paint reds with like a kind of a black red and then layer up to a light red. But I've started using blues and purples for highlight in my fantasy miniatures and my kingdom death miniatures. And I really like the pop that it gives it the color contrast. It looks a little bit more interesting than just using a dark red. And for this technique is also it's super quick. So after we get those, the blues and violets down, now I'm just taking a red that's pretty much undiluted. I mean, this is very thick paint, which is a nice thing that you can do with these artist acrylics. They're nice thick paint, but they also are very creamy and go on very smooth. So I'm just taking it and just going right over it. And those areas that we painted the blue and the purple will kind of blend with the red into a nice dark burgundy color which looks like a nice shade for the red. This is sometimes called sketching. I, a lot of top level painters use this to get their values sketched out on their models before they then spend hundreds of hours on it. But it's also a nice speed paint technique for those of us who are just trying to crank out models to just get some nice transitions down to make it look like we spent a lot more time than we actually did on it. I think it looks a lot better than the usual speed paint technique and just throwing down three separate colors with very harsh transitions and calling it a day. This doesn't take much more time than that, and I think you get pretty decent results. So already you can see on this cloak, I've only spent a minute or two on it. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty much wet blending. A lot of the, pa the paint's still wet, and I'm just keep going over it with the layers of the red. And we have s some nice shadows and highlights. And then what I've liked to do, and this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, is adding some texture 
to my clothing here. It also helps hide the transitions between the colors. So I'm just taking pretty much a light pink and I'm just making little striations along the ridge of the clothing here. Like you can see like the texture of the fabric. And this is a technique I've picked up watching, especially Sam Lenz and other professional painters. They love putting texture on there. It's kind of like the new hot technique among the top level painters. I don't do it all that well, but I do think it gives uh, something interesting for your eye to look at on clothing that's usually pretty smooth and bland. So once I get those little striations down, I'm just going to take that red, glaze it down pretty uh, thin and go over the areas I just put those little light pink striations and it will blend it down and just give a hint of texture to the cloak. So here we're applying that deep red, especially from a distance, like when you're looking down at the table at them, it really makes them pop, really makes your models stand out, add some nice contrast. And that's the last thing I'm going to show you on this model. And I'll just paint them up and show you the finished product. And we'll talk about what I thought about these paints. So overall, I've been really impressed with the artist acrylic line from scale 75. Along with this skin tone line, I also have just a random assortment of colors from the Kickstarter. Basically just your beginner's painting kit for artists, you know, a bunch of different reds, blues, browns, things like that. And they've basically been all I've been using. Uh, they blend really well with one another. So you can mix and match the colors to get really unique shades. And I've tried them out in the airbrush. I've used them thick. I've used them really thin. And I've been impressed. I think they go on a little bit smoother and have a little bit better coverage overall than the normal scale 75 uh, miniature paint line. Especially the reds seem to have much better coverage than what I experienced with their normal line. And the skin tones too, they go on really smooth, which I think is important. Sometimes with their old skin tones, I'd have a problem of having to go over the same spot layer after layer, just trying to build it up because it was for some reason, especially on like the edges or rounded corners of objects, the paint, the paint would just stay way too thin and look splotchy. And I haven't really noticed that with this uh, heavy bodied acrylic line. So now it is on the Scale 75 website. You can order it. It's no longer a Kickstarter exclusive, which is why I made this review. So if you're in the market for trying out some heavy bodied acrylics, I would really say give Scale 75 a shot. And I also think these paints are great if you're on a budget. You just need to buy 10 or 12 basic colors and then you can mix any shade that you need since these do mix so well with one another. And they also do mix well with your standard miniature acrylics. So anyway, hopefully you found this helpful. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you all soon with a new video. Take care.